day 11. So yesterday we um, put in our second view model and we persisted the user's preference whether they like notifications or don't like notifications. And um, we updated our, our quote view to um, look at that value before deciding whether we should try to trigger notifications. So what we're gonna do today is, uh, we're actually doing pretty good on time. So we're gonna take a little bit of time today to just refactor what we have and kind of clean up our code as we're, as uh, that we've written so far. So um, additionally, just a, a little call to action for you all. Uh, what else should this app do? We have a little bit of extra time. We're making better time than I originally expected. So if you have thoughts on what you would like this application to do, let me know and we can um, just, put a comment below, I guess. And uh, we can take it from there and see if we have any good suggestions, try to implement those before Christmas. Okay, so let's just jump into refactoring. Today will be nice and light. This is our application. I've got an emulator that's in a bit of a weird state, so I'm going to restart that. So it says Mac OS, let's make sure this selects iOS simulator, weird, it like closed the other one and open this one. We'll let this launch really quick. And then whenever it launches, we'll start our application. Okay. Let's go ahead and click on our play button in VS code, or you can do flutter run from the command line. Uh, for better or worse, I made quite a lot of environment changes to my Mac <laughs> earlier today. So hopefully we don't run into any technical issues, but there's, as always, a chance that we do. We'll go ahead and let this launch. And um, I guess I can point out some of the stuff that I'd like to clean up. Uh, namely this. This is, this is kind of gross that this is all happening um, right here in our main method. It may need to happen at this point in time, but we can at least pull it out to a function. We could also look at pulling out our adapter layer. Um, so our, we're registering our adapter somewhere else. Uh, uh, iOS 17.2 is not installed. To download and install the platform, open Xcode. Okay. Um, so maybe that's what we're gonna do today. So if you run into this issue, this is because you have updated your, um, I guess you've updated your Mac like I have, and you um, need to make sure that you have the appropriate iOS versions installed for Xcode. So we'll open our project in Xcode. And we'll do a little tour of Xcode. So if you hit open existing project, find your project, so ours is called Philosopher Stone, iOS, you wanna open the workspace, so XC workspace, and then you hit open. This will pull up one of my least favorite tools, Xcode, and if you can see my CPU bar up here at the top, you'll see this max out for probably the rest of the video, or at least while Xcode is open. Okay, so we have a new flavor of iOS 17.2, and that's what our simulator is running. So we need to install that. Thankfully, this has gotten a lot easier. Um, it tells us it's not installed right here. There's a button that says Git. So if we hit this Git button, it will download for us. The good news is we can still refactor while this is working. So we'll let this run in the background. It's shockingly much better pace than usual. And um, we'll refactor while we're doing that. So we won't have an easy way to physically test our device, but we do still have our unit tests that we've written. Not that we have good coverage anymore, um, but the tests that we do have are still valuable. Okay, so let's start by taking all of this and pulling it out to a method. We can highlight it all, go to refactor, extract method, initialize notification, Plug in. Okay, that's much better. 
keeps that clean. We can also move this out of our main.dart. So one thing that I like to do is um, set up modules based on feature. And so we have a quotes module and a settings module because we have to quotes feature and a settings feature. Uh, we could make a case for a notifications feature. And what we can do here is now we can take this initialize notification plugin method that we just extracted, cut that, and then we can move that to um, a new file in our notifications folder, notifications module. Uh, so I'm just gonna call this notifications manager dart. Again, with dart, I tend to lean towards classes. Um, they're not required. You could just leave the function in here if you wanted, but I, I do tend to prefer classes. So we'll do notifications manager. I'm gonna make this a static. So this will be static future void. And then we need to import all of our dependencies for this. In our case, it's just the local notifications plugin. We need to find a uh, home for our on did receive notifications response. So let's go back to main.dart. Let's import our new notifications manager dot initialize notifications plugin. And then we need this method here. Um, this method's kind of interesting. We're not actually doing anything with it, right? We have this on did receive notifications response. It's not actually doing anything. If we cared about the payload that was being sent with that notification, uh, we, we could look at that here and then decide what we want to do. For example, we might navigate the user to the settings view as opposed to the default view that they land on. Um, I guess to talk a little bit more about this, the way that works is whenever you schedule a notification, you can send a payload with the notification. So this might be like the quote ID or and going back to like our Facebook or Twitter example, um, the URL or the uh, UUID of the tweet. So whenever the user clicks on that notification, it calls this on did receive notification response. We look at the payload and we say, oh, that's this tweet. So then we make sure that when the user loads their timeline, they see that tweet. Um, for our application, we're not really doing much. So we can actually inline this or maybe null it. Yeah, we can just make it null. We don't even need it. So let's do that. Okay, this already feels a little bit cleaner. We can remove this dependency on this plugin in this file. I'm gonna adjust in my chair, sorry for the noise. Okay, and now we probably should give our material app a new title while we're cleaning things up. So we'll call this Philosopher's Stone. Okay. I'm fairly happy with this for now. We may come back and pull this stuff out to a, another file, but for now, I'm, I'm pretty happy with what we have. So we have our quote entry, or I'm sorry, our quote view that has the setup notification scheduling piece, right? So all of this needs to happen whenever we want to schedule notifications. So I'm going to go to our notifications manager. We're gonna add another method. This one's gonna also gonna be static. So it'll be a static uh, schedule notification. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll go back to our quote view, quote view. And I will grab everything. Uh, we probably will keep the time zone initialization in this new file as well simply because we only need this whenever we are working with notifications. So in our case, we can grab all of this and then remove that. I, I cut that just to clarify. And we'll say notification manager dot schedule notification. This returns a future. Um, if we want to do a wait it, we can. In our case, I don't necessarily think we need to worry about that. Oh, our interesting. So if we don't await it, our try catch won't work as expected. So we can await this. 
Um, and the reason why is that this will complete before, the try will complete before this finishes. So that's maybe a little bit of an oddity. So this is a future, probably void. We'll change that if we need to in just a moment. And then we can paste our um, cut code right here. We need to make this async so we can await. We need to initialize our Flutter local notifications plugin. Um, or it is initialized right here, but we need to pull this out somewhere. So we'll move this to a static on the class. We can also rename this now and make it private, which is a good move. We don't want people directly um, leveraging this. Static final, yep. Our, our code editor is giving us guidance, so we'll follow that guidance in this case, or the language server if you want to be particular. Uh, we need to import time zone. Um, this is a bit of a weird import. It didn't seem to recognize it automatically. So I'm going to go back to our quote view, and we're going to grab the time zone. Ah, that's why it didn't, uh, because it's a, we were doing an as binding on the import. And that's why I didn't know what TZ was because it didn't actually map to anything um, from an import perspective. Go back to our notifications manager, import all the time zone stuff as TZ, and then we're in a pretty good spot. We do need to return. So we'll return an empty uh, a void uh, return. And remember, since this is async, we're not actually returning void, we're returning a future void. Okay, so now we've moved all of our notification management out to this notifications manager. And a good way to check this and make sure that we are not doing any more notification stuff is we can take this import, paste it over here. We see one more in quote view, but if we um, take a look at this, we should see that this is should no longer be needed. So let's go ahead and remove it. Ah, yep, one last piece of code left to remove. Okay, now all of our notification uh, management has been moved out to this notifications manager, aptly named. Um, the only exception is the prompting of whether the user wants notifications. So you could take this a step farther if you want. You could take this value, send it to schedule notification, have schedule notification decide whether it should try to schedule it or not based off that value. I kind of like what we have here. Um, you, there's definitely a case for both. Okay, so we've cleaned this up some. We have our quote view model, loading quotes, set up notification scheduling. This feels pretty good. Let's look at our problems. Let's clean up some unused imports. These are really nice and easy to clean up. So we use a code action, remove all unused imports. Don't invoke print in production code. Okay, we'll probably circle back to this one at a later date. I'm gonna check on Xcode and see how this is going. Not even halfway done. Exciting. This is the fun part of uh, doing these daily and doing them live. Added a couple more commas there just to space this out and format it a little better. Um, let's talk about Firebase. We're going to use a tool called Firebase. Uh, I'm going to hit go to console. You'll have to sign up if you don't have a Firebase account. Um, so I'm going to register this under my organization, but you can register it under an individual account. This is free. There's nothing to worry about either way. I get to type in my one password. And then enter password. Come on, please. Okay, perfect. Okay. So I'm gonna add a new project. We're gonna give it a name. It's called Philosopher's Stone. Okay, that's our unique identifier. I don't like that dangling S right there. So if we remove the quote, it won't dangle that S. Okay, we can enable Google Analytics. I think I want Google Analytics for this. So we'll go ahead and enable it. Create an account. Um, if you don't have a Google Analytics account, if you do, just point it to the one that you have automatically create a new property in this account. That's good, unless you want to bind it to an existing property. If you don't know what that means, just hit automatically create a new property. 
create project. There's a lot of analytics engines. Um, Google Analytics has some pros and some cons. The pro is that it hooks in really nicely with Firebase. Um, cons, it's not very privacy conscious. There's, uh, there's a lot, uh, I guess, also out of the scope of this video. But Google that on your own time or Bing it or DuckDuckGo or Ecosia, whatever search engine you want to use, depending on where your allegiances lie. Okay, new project is ready. So we can see our new project. We hit, we hit continue, it takes us to our, oh, this UI's changed. Um, there's a button here for Flutter. So we'll hit the Flutter button. Install the Firebase CLI. Okay, so if we go here, I might have this installed, I might not. So I'm gonna hit Mac. It's gonna take me down to Mac or Linux. I'll go ahead and run this anyways. Oh, sorry, that's a separate project. This will prompt me to install. Um, friendly reminder, especially if you don't trust the source, you should always look at the script that you're running before you just execute arbitrary scripts from the internet on your machine. Um, don't use me as an example. Okay, we have Firebase tools installed. If you don't, let's try this again. If you don't have them installed, you'll get a different message. It'll prompt you to install. Just walk through the installer. It'll look something like this. Okay, setting permissions, great. Once this gets finished, we will, we have Flutter installed. We need to run Firebase login next, so we'll do that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next since I know that Firebase login is the next thing we need to do. Already logged in. So if you're not logged in, um, I've done other Firebase projects on this computer before with this user. So that's why you're seeing that I'm already logged in. But if you haven't logged in, I think it prompts you to open a URL in your browser and then you sign in with Google and then it connects it to your Firebase um, instance down here. So now that we're here, we can run Dart Pub Global Activate Flutterfire CLI. So Flutterfire was, I believe, an open source project um, that was not managed by the Firebase team, which in case you don't know, Firebase is owned by Google. And uh, I think they took it in under their wing and are now treating it as a first party um, solution. Uh, Flutterfire is actually really nice. It's one of the nicer like third party tool setups that I've seen. So we just follow the steps here. So Flutterfire configure, pass in our project identifier. The current directory does not appear to be a Flutter project. I'm glad it said that. So we want to CD into our project, Philosopher's Stone. You'll notice that I'm in the terminal for this. I don't have tips for doing this in VS Code. I don't know if there's a way. Probably is, but terminal is what I know here. Okay, so this will fetch the Firebase projects and then configure it. Which platform should your configuration support? Use arrow keys and spacebar to select. We don't care about Mac, we don't care about web, we just want iOS and Android. Okay, that's... <laughs> Hopefully it's only doing that once and not a bajillion times, but we'll see. Fetching registered iOS Firebase apps. Com examples not registered. Oh, that's bad. We probably should have changed that before we got to this point. I'm gonna copy this. Uh, the files Android build Gradle and Android app build Gradle will be updated to apply with Firebase configuration and Gradle plugins. Yes. Okay. So this is our Firebase app ID. I'll change mine before we actually deploy this. Um, but in the meantime, I want to come back to our editor. I'm gonna hit Command Shift F to search everywhere. I'm gonna search for com.example and we're gonna change this from com.example. Um, so this will be com.pyrestudios. That's my organization that this is under. You'll put it under like com.bradcypert, your, your com.first name. Um, it's, it's pretty common. You can change your namespace to something else if you'd like, but it's pretty common to have it com dot and then the uh, name. So th the way this kind of works is it's, it's like the inverse of a website. So pyrestudios.com, it'd be com dot pyrestudios. 
Let's come here. Let's name this instead of com.example.philosopherstone. We'll name this com.pyrestudios.philosopherstone. Have to update this one to be com.pyrestudios. Change this one to be com.pyrestudios. All of our bundle identifiers here will be com.pyrestudios. Um, and the only reason I'm not doing this with like a find and replace on all of these matches is I just want to make sure this is this is important to get right. So I want to make sure that we are modifying the right files in the right places. Okay, almost done. Com.pyre studios. This is the uh, Linux build, so we don't necessarily need to update this one, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. This one's Mac OS. Again, we don't necessarily need to update that one, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, Mac OS again. Mac OS again. One more Mac OS. Okay, and then this one's Windows, com.pyrestudios, com.pyrestudios. Okay, those have all been updated. Uh, there are some implications for that, which it's, it's good that we did that now, but basically that would be changing our namespace. And if we were to install a version of our application with a set namespace and then install the same application with another namespace, it would be two different applications. And there, uh, in our case, there I think there would also be issues with like sharing data between the two, so you couldn't like migrate to the new one, the appropriate one, with all of your data carrying over. Um, since we don't store that on a server somewhere, and we store that on the device. Okay, we see target of URI doesn't exist. So uh, what we need to do here is run flutter pub git. No, okay, that's. Uh, something I was slightly afraid of. Why? I'll have to debug my environment on my own time. Um, but I can go to pubspec and then save, and it should run flutter pub git. Okay. Okay, it fetched Firebase core, so it's not, oh, maybe it didn't fetch Firebase core. The imported package Firebase core isn't a dependency of the importing package. Okay. So let's go to PubSpec. We need to add Firebase core, I guess. I'm kind of shocked it didn't add that for us in our PubSpec. Yeah, I'm really shocked. That's wild. Okay. Let's see Flutterfire configure. the Firebase core package. Okay. So we can take these into main.dart, add imports here. Um, it's going to yell at us because Firebase core is not imported yet. We'll take care of that in just a second. And then we'll need to call initialize app. We'll run that really, really early. And then Firebase comes from Firebase core. So we need to go to pub.dev, Firebase core, 2.24.2. So if we come back to our pub spec, whoops, Firebase core 2.24.2. see if this fixes our issue. No, maybe not. Oh, okay. It looks like it did. It was weird that it kind of started down that path and then changed its mind. So now we're initializing our application in Firebase. We'll go back to our um, documentation here. Then add and begin using the Flutter plugins for the Firebase products you'd like to use. If you're using analytics or performance monitoring, you may need to follow a few additional setup steps. 
Okay, that's fine. The one we're most interested in right now is Crashlytics. So if we go, I, let me talk a little bit about this first. So you can see here we have iOS and Android. They're both listed right here. Um, we have, we've selected Crashlytics. There are other options here that you can explore. There's this great, how do I get started? If you wanna learn more about what Crashlytics is or any of the features that they have over here, they usually have little videos for them, examples of what it can do for you. Um, it's, it's a really great setup for mobile, mobile developers. And most of the stuff is free. So I clicked on that link that takes me to the available plugins. There are plugin names here. You can also see what support they have. iOS and Android is gonna be supported on all of them, thankfully. Web, almost, and then um, other products, somewhat. So Crashlytics is the one we want. So I'm gonna command click that. Get started with Firebase Crash, Firebase Crashlytics. Flutter selected. Uh, involves using both the command line tool and your IDE to finish setup. You'll need to force a test exception to be thrown and send your first crash report to Firebase. Nice and easy. So now that we're here, we can run Flutter pub add Firebase Crashlytics. Uh, friendly reminder, my <laughs> environment is a little messed up at the moment. So we'll do this the alternative way, which is go to pub.dev, search the package, and then find 348 is the package version. So we'll come back to our pub spec, paste this here, and do caret 3.4.8. Okay. I'm gonna open this too, just in case we need to cross-reference it. I'll click back to my tab, from the root of your project, run Flutter Fire Configure. That ensures your configuration's up to date. And for Android, adds the required Crashlytics Gradle plugin to your app. Okay, so even though we just ran this, we're gonna run it one more time. Yeah, I changed shells earlier today um, and I ran into a bunch of really weird issues, but the shell setup I was using previously was forks forcing um, x86 architecture. And I was trying to play around with bun, a new JavaScript runtime, and it uh, it did not go super well. So I was trying to, it was installing the x86 version, but when it was executing, it was trying to execute as an ARM process or an ARM process. So it was uh, uh, getting illegal operations whenever trying, and it was, it was a whole ordeal. So. I tracked down the source of that being like a weird shell setup that I had, so I just decided to go back to original Z shell. Anyways, selecting the Firebase product, we want Philosopher's Stone. Um, we've kind of gone through this song and dance before. We don't want Mac OS, we don't want web. We'll go ahead and let this re-register everything if necessary. Okay, I think it is gonna register another app because we changed our um, company name in our namespace but that's okay. Let this finish. Yes, we do want to override it. Generate Firebase app ID, yep, override it, yep, override it, that's fine. Okay, so some things likely changed a little bit, but now that we're here, we've ran Flutterfire configure, we can run our application. Maybe, are we done with Xcode? 71%, we're not done. So we'll run our application and then what we wanna do is um, configure our crash handlers in that case. So we can go ahead and take care of this right now. So we're gonna go back to our main.dart. Before we can initialize Firebase, we wanna call widget binding, widgets binding dot instance dot ensure I'm sorry, it's right here. Widgets flutter binding ensure initialized. So we'll take this, we'll paste this right here. And then going back, we want to set all of our fatal errors to the uh, from the framework to Crashlytics. And we can do that after we initialize the app. We'll need to import Firebase Crashlytics. Okay. To catch asynchronous errors that aren't handled by the Flutter framework, use platform dispatcher instance on error. So we can add this line too. Okay. 
And then you can kind of see here, Firebase error is how we record errors. So if we wanted to fix this issue where we have this uh, print code in production and we wanted to log an error, we could do Firebase log in the next fatal or non-fatal error report or record error, submits a Crashlytics report of a caught error, um, record flutter error, fatal flutter error, lots of options. So in our case, we could just log this and it might be helpful to know that um, if this throws an error later, like if, if the app crashes or something similar, there's a fatal exception, uh, we will know whether this triggered um, another thing you might want to look at is like an actual log uh, aggregator or a tool like Sentry. Um, Sentry is it's a logging platform. So um, Sentry.io. There's other tools like Rollbar and um, honestly, not sure. I I, yeah, I basically just use Sentry. Uh, so Sentry has support for Flutter, which is really nice. Dart Flutter. Um, you can try Sentry for free. Here's basically all you would need to do to set it up. And then you have to get a DSN and key from your account. Um, it's very easy to do. And uh, it gives you like actual, like like really good logging and crash reporting. So I guess it's kind of an alternative to Crashlytics. Um, the point that I'm getting at though is that um, pick, it, pick a tool and make sure it meets your needs and then make sure you are leveraging that tool to the fullest capabilities. That, that makes sense to be used. Okay, so log takes in a message. Um, so we'll say we were unable to schedule notifications because an exception occurred. And then we can say something like e dot two string. So if this happens, we add this to our Firebase Crashlytics log, and then the next time that a fatal error or a flutter error or a error, a, sorry, a error, an error is recorded to Firebase Crashlytics, this will show up too if it was triggered previously. You can literally think of this as a log. So if this doesn't trigger and an error happens, we won't see this we will have information about the crash, but we won't have information like this information because this isn't relevant to that crash. But if it is potentially relevant, we'll have this information attached to the crash report. Okay. So we're back here. Um, if we're not finished installing, let me refresh this really quick. Make sure we don't have two philosopher's stones. We probably do. Philosopher's Stone. Okay, just one from the looks of it. Ah, okay, there are two. That's fine. Um, that's, again, because we didn't have the correct name space. Uh, we had com.example, and we wanted com.pyrestudios in my case, or com.whatever your name is. If this isn't finished, okay, it's not finished. So we're just going to end the video here, I think, and then I'll let this finish downloading, and tomorrow we'll actually test this because I don't need to make you all wait for my uh, Xcode to finish downloading a new version of iOS. Um, probably my least favorite part about developing on a Mac is anytime I need to interop with like Xcode or Apple's simulators and stuff like that. It, it always feels like it, it, it can be quite a pain at first um, and whenever there's updates and other fun stuff. Okay, so circling back, um, let me know what you what you think this application should do next. We are we have a little bit of time, like as in days, um, before I planned on this finishing, so we're ahead of schedule. And if you have ideas of what this application needs or what you would like to see in it, maybe we can try to implement some of that and uh, get that shipped as part of our application. Um, I probably won't do that next. So probably what I'll do next is we'll test our crash reporting, make sure it works. And then I will walk through what this looks like to set up a Play Store account and then an Apple App Store account and get things going with test flight and the internal test track. 
And that way, if you've been following along to this point, you will have something on your device, if you would like to, um, by Christmas so you can show off your application to your friends and family and say, hey, I made this. Um, oh, now it's finishing. And the video is being very slow because of it. Yep, I can't even stop the video because it is taking all of my CPU. The power's going. Oh my gosh, cancel it, cancel it. It's fine. I'll deal with that on my own time. Um. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you can get notified of new video updates. Uh, I think you have to ring the bell, is what they say. Uh, click the bell to make sure that you don't miss any of those. And then um, thanks for sticking with me so far and enjoy your Tuesday. Hope you're happy with how this is turning out because I am. I certainly am.